Okay, let's look at these questions. It says a uh, trash compactor can compress its content to some factor. Let me just give it a label so that I can reference it. Some factor times their original value. Uh, neglecting the mass of the air expelled. By what factor is the density of rubbish increased? Ah, so it, this is the picture. I have some amount of material. And uh, let's just say this compactor is just reducing the height. So it goes from this to some compressed material um, that has 0 0.35 times the height it had before. If it, this was one meter tall, now it's uh, 0 0.35 meter tall. Uh, same base and all that. Um, so volume has changed. And um, hopefully you have this intuition that amount of mass, however much mass there is, that doesn't change from the, uh, the compacting, especially if we are neglecting the mass of air expelled. So the, the definition and expression for density is mass per volume. Here, the amount of mass didn't change. So really, the only thing that changed is volume. So you went from some amount of volume V0 to some new volume, 0 0.35 V0. So um, going from M over V0 to M over 0 0.35 V0. Uh, so for the factor by which the density increased, I just uh, uh, need 1 over 0 0.35. And um, can I do that? I mean, it's approximately three, but I think it's off enough that I shouldn't do it in my head. <laughs> Let me just use a calculator. Um, so yeah, 2.86. It would have graded a three as incorrect because uh, it enforces 1% tolerance on all the questions. Yeah, so this is, uh, it's easiest to answer through scaling argument like this. Uh, it could have been quicker if I just jumped straight to the scaling. Okay, let's look at the other question. Okay, it says, wow, have a pressure cookers really been around for 300 years? Huh. I, I, I mean, I guess makes sense. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you need is the same kind of equipment that you need for alchemy and chemistry. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> They've been around for more than 300 years, although they declined in recent years. Oh. Huh. Yeah, but uh, there's an Insta pot. Don't people like those? <laughs> How much force must the latches holding the lid onto the pressure cooker be able to withstand? If the circular lid is 27 centimeter in diameter and the gauge pressure is set, ah, okay. So there's a couple of things to uh, note. So let's uh, start with the, the, the diagram of the, the pressure cooker. So the main part that's important is the cross sectional area of the lid. And uh, they've given us the diameter for that. And they told us that gauge pressure inside this two atmosphere. And here's where you should know what gauge means. Um, if you misread this question, it's uh, uh, possible to overthink it and get the wrong answer. So I guess uh, it goes to answer to this question. What is the pressure inside the, uh, inside the, the, the pressure cooker? And uh, if you're asking this question to a chemist, for example, who needs to calculate what is the boiling temperature of the water inside the cooker, then what this pressure inside should be is equal to two atmosphere plus one atmosphere. That's what gauge pressure means. This uh, one atmosphere that I'm adding here, that's the pressure of the outside. Outside, you have a pressure of approximately one atmosphere. And whenever a problem tells you the gauge pressure, it's telling you only the difference between the outside environmental and, and by uh, environmental, 
ambient ambient pressure and the difference between that and the pressure inside the object that you are looking at so um, almost if you you know miss the word gauge and you forgot to take the outside atmospheric pressure into account then you'll get the correct answer uh, it's uh, kind of nicer that way it's uh, that that's really uh, why a lot of physics questions will use gauge pressure because one it's also uh, easier way to measure pressure in something because you all you need is a valve or something that's able to kind of sample air from outside inside and it can read off gauge pressure pretty easily um, it's a convenient way to measure pressure at one and two uh, if we the problem had given us the absolute pressure inside we would have to take atmospheric pressure into account and do more work actually. So it's a pretty simple question. It's asking for the force. So we need to use the definition or it comes from the definition of pressure. Force due to pressure is the amount of pressure times the area. Um, it comes from pressure being force divided by area. So uh, I think I'm given all the information or I'm given everything that I can use to um, convert to the things I need. So let me try doing it this way. Um, so I'm going to define T as a symbol. And let me define atmosphere as a symbol. This is a way you can treat units um, somehow. And yeah, I think that'll work fine. So with those, the expression force is equal to pressure times area. Well, um, the pressure would be two atmosphere times. Now for area, I need an expression for that. Oh, in fact, let me define one more symbol, radius r. So area of a, a circular cross section would be pi times r squared. And, uh, and this is actually a valid sagemetic expression because I defined all the symbols, but it doesn't give us the number that we want. So we do have to work through it more. So one, I would want to substitute R with uh, um, in terms of a diameter. So R is diameter divided by two. Uh, okay, that goes one step further so I can after having done this, I can substitute what the diameter is. Diameter is 0 0.27 meters. And this is where defining atmosphere as a symbol can give me a way to do this. So this is in unit of meter squared times atmosphere. And atmosphere is in a basic SI unit. So I need atmosphere expressed in basic SI units. And if ATM is a symbol, then I can plug in what the value of the uh, pressure of one atmosphere is in the basic SI unit, which would be Pascal. Um, so that uh, I have this number memorized from high school chemistry. Somehow I never forgot. Uh, one atmosphere is 101.3 kilopascal or 101,300 Pascal. And this unit of Pascal, that's Newton per meter squared. That's what I mean, it's a basic SI unit. It's constructed out of the SI unit quantities. So I put in that quantity. One atmosphere is equal to 101, three, oops, 300 um, in basic SI units, yeah. And after this, the unit will work out. So it, the number that we get, uh, let me pass it through decimal approximation. Uh, number that we get should be in the unit of Newton. So move three decimals over, one, two, three, four kilonewtons. It's 11.6 kilonewton. So pretty simple, um, just a more unit conversion. And if somehow you're getting tripped up uh, in unit conversion, use Wolfram Alpha that I there's no context in this class where using Wolfram Alpha is not allowed. Because um, unit conversion, as much as I think it's uh, good for people to learn how to do it, I don't want that to be a barrier in learning actual physics because automated tools can convert units very easily and accurately. Okay, I think one last question remaining, uh, 8-1. All right, oh, uh, this one, 
it's a formula. Uh, do I want to look it up? Yeah, let me um, <laughs> write it down and then look it up. <laughs> so this question says, the greatest ocean depths on Earth are found in Mariana Trench near the Philippines. I think all these are irrelevant details. <laughs> Calculate the pressure due to the ocean at the bottom of the trench given up. So we are given some height, um, just to remember to convert this to basic SI unit for later when we are plugging in numbers. Um, so let me call this H. And assuming the density of seawater, and this is in basic SI unit, don't get fooled by kilo in kilogram is constant all the way down. Okay, um, so this uh, uses one of the expressions that we derived in lecture. Um, we derived this uh, both on the way to deriving buoyancy force and also uh, just generally useful expression, which is a uh, pressure due to weight of a fluid. I don't think there's any um, shorter name than that. That I just have to spell it out each time. That pressure is given by the density of fluid times G times the, the height of the fluid. The remarkable thing about this formula when we derived it was that it uh, didn't depend on the, the size, the air, cross sectional area of the fluid container that we are thinking of. And uh, even though for the derivation we considered almost like cubic or cylindrical shape, uh, even when the shape is irregular, like a narrower bottom and a uh, wider top, it is a, this is still generally valid expression. Now, if you happen to not remember formulas like this, because this is getting to that part of physics where there are quite a few formulas, and I don't know if uh, I would recommend that you memorize all of them. Um, the number one thing that you need to know how to do is you need to know where to look it up in your textbook. That's really the most important thing because um, at some point in your uh, science and engineering education, you are going to learn more things than you can possibly hope to memorize. So what you should memorize is knowing where the information is. So here it would be, well, it would be some area in fluid chapter. Um, and I'm just guessing through here. It's either here or here or here. You know, let me just start from top and then just go down that way. I don't think I, I remember those chapters, so that uh, I think enough to at least uh, minimize the amount of time I need to spend flipping through the textbook. Uh, pressure, yeah, definition of pressure. Uh, I think they are about to derive the pressure due to weight of fluid. Yeah, pressure and depth for a fluid of constant density. Yeah, so this would be like a pressure at the, the surface of the fluid. And I only really need this part. Although, um, so I guess uh, looking at the pinot, uh, what I would, might potentially have to take into account is the atmospheric pressure. Although I would almost bet that um, it's going to be negligibly small compared to the other pressure. So, so yeah, but this is where you have the formula, write it down, and then use it from there. So let's plug in the numbers and see. So we have density of the seawater, 1027 in basic SI unit, G in basic SI unit times and 11 kilometers, I want to put it in basic SI units, meter. So 11,000 and 20 meter. So when I, and uh, let me just uh, multiply this, um, 10 to the power of minus three uh, for conversion from Pascal to kilopascal. So when I put that in, I get, wow, large number of kilopascal. So I, if I simply put this in, 110912 kilopascal, that will be considered correct because this addition of one atmosphere, it amounts to a difference of 100 uh, kilopascal. And um, here it, that, that difference is less than 1%. So, so, you know, for more correct answer, I might say one zero, but um, this should also be graded as correct. Yeah. And, you know, if you took, uh, 
the atmospheric pressure into a cloud, that also would be graded as correct because they are within 1% of each other. So, all right, so that's the last question I hadn't done in the past, I believe. Um, yeah, 